What's up guys, War here. Today I'm gonna bring you one of the strongest Blood Surge overpower builds inside of season two for the Necromancer that you guys have seen so far. We are five days, six days into season two, and we hit 100, we have done all of the end game content, and we are just absolutely loving our overpower Blood Surge build for the Necromancer. Today, I'm gonna go over everything that you guys need for the build, the Paragon board, and showcase a little bit of the gameplay and show you exactly what to do with this build with the brand new Vampiric Powers. Let's get right into it. Okay, guys, so we're here with the Blood Surge Necromancer. As you guys all know, the Blood Surge Necromancer was extremely buffed, or at least Overpower was extremely buffed from all of the patch notes. So I'm gonna go over everything that I have for the build. This is a continuation of the leveling build if you guys have seen that one. Check it out here. Blood Surge is very, very strong to level with the Necromancer in season two. So let's break down everything that we have here and show you what we got. So we're starting off with Hemorrhage, guys. We're going Hemorrhage all the way into Acolyte's Hemorrhage. The reason that we're doing this is because the additional attack speed. Hemorrhage has a chance to drop Blood Orbs. This build is all about having Blood Orbs, staying fortified, and being as healthy as possible. So we are trying to maximize the amount of Blood Orbs that we have, okay? So we're doing Hemorrhage into Acolyte's Hemorrhage because our attack speed gets insane and Blood Orbs are gonna be dropping like crazy. Next, we're coming down. We're doing one point in Unliving Energy for Essence, but uh, just to get you in perfectly balanced for three points core skills deal more damage, but they cost more Then of course we're doing blood surge here. We got blood surge maxed out into paranormal Okay, if an enemy is damaged by blood surge while we're healthy We get a stack and once we have five stacks our sixth attack for with blood surge is a guaranteed overpower Because this build is all about overpowering as you guys saw in the footage We deal insane amounts of damage when we are overpowered Okay, so we're gonna go do that. And with, our, with as much attack speed that we actually have on the build, we get that sixth count very, very quickly. Then we're gonna come down to our corpse and max skills. We're doing blood uh, mist into ghastly. Now, a lot of people have asked me why I don't take dreadful. Dreadful, I think is good for just no. leveling to help keep you fortified and healing. But with as much healing and fortify that we get, I think the addition to just go into a big pack with Blood Mist, drop the corpse, which allows us to instantly hit our corpse tendrils and just pull them in and create our blood orbs with corpse tendrils. I think having the um, corpse being generated from Blood Mist is just really powerful. Okay, so nothing else there, guys. We're gonna come down to our curses. This is where we really excel in the build. We're taking three points in Death's Embrace where we deal more damage to close enemies because we are technically, even though we are an AOE build, we're gonna be up close and personal and personal and then they deal nine less damage to us then we're taking um three points in amplified damage we got two more from our amulet so we deal increased damage to cursed enemies every enemy should be cursed all the time no matter what and we're doing that with decrepify okay now once we get into the vampiric powers i'll showcase how we curse there but this is our main curse here with decrepify we want this okay this is going to allow us not only to slow our enemies, but a chance to stun them. But more importantly, we are going to generate all of our essence back once we, de once we decrep decrepify. Okay, make sure I get that right. And I'll explain that once we get into our gear. So we are gonna be doing decrepify all the way into aberrant decrepify. The reason for this is even though it's a lucky hit, okay, it's a decent lucky hit chance that we have on our um, blood nova. And with as many hits as that we're doing, we should be able to proc this. This is gonna help give us our cooldowns being re reduced by one second. Our main cooldown that we'll be on it, we want to get reset all the time is Corpse Tendrils for infinite pull and stun, but to help redo and recast our Bone Storm, okay? Now we're gonna come down to the bread and butter of the build. We are gonna be doing Corpse Tendrils into Blighted Corpse Tendrils. This is where we stun, this is where we slow, and we have a 35% chance to drop a Blood Orb when we damage an enemy. So when we pull in a big group of uh, monsters, each one of those has a 35% chance to drop a Blood Orb, and then we're gonna be dealing insane amounts of damage once we pick those up. This is very good, it's gonna help keep us alive. Now, we are taking every single Blood Skill that we have. Every single Blood Skill, no matter what. Gruesome Mending for more healing from all sources. This includes Pots, um, the Blood Orbs that we pick up, etc. Then we're doing transfusion on a lucky hit. Our blood skills have a chance I to drop apologize. a blood orb. This happens every four seconds. This is great. Coal less in blood. While we're healthy, we deal 18% more damage. Very strong here. Sorry. If you can get an amulet that has this, this is good. Three points in the drain vitality on a lucky hit. 
we have a chance to fortify 8% of our health, which is really good. And 8% of my health is 1500, which is nuts. Then with Tides of Blood, which is arguably Sorry. the best one for this build, which is the extra two points I have from my amulet, our blood skills Look. deal even more Sorry. overpower damage. This um, bonus, da this damage is doubled while we're healthy. We should always be healthy. It should be very rare that our health is actually below being healthy, if at all taken away from being fortified. Now we're going to come down to our ultimate skills here. We're doing three points in Inspiring Leader for more attack speed. From our um, when we, Now they changed this. It used to be four seconds. Now it's two seconds. While we're healthy for two, we get attack speed. Huge. Then we're doing Standalone as well as Memento Mori, sacrificing all of our minions, increased damage reduction, and uh, our sacrifice of bonuses for our warriors as the mages are increased by 60%, which is pretty dang good. Now our ultimate... We were doing Blood Wave in the leveling build because Blood Wave with the uh, Tidal Wave power, you throw three Blood Waves and you create nine Blood Orbs. This is good. However, Bone Storm in the end is just better. Bone Storm is going to give us damage reduction while it's active. We're going to have an increased crit chance. And then we are also going to be able to have some nice just added effects with our gear. So Bone Storm in the end is better than blood wave because blood wave isn't necessarily doing damage the same as bone storm but the benefits are much better we don't care about the slow the blood orbs are good but because we're creating so many of them anyway we want some more defense and we want to be able to stay alive a lot better okay so we're doing um bone storm there then our key passive of course is rathbus vigor this was insanely buffed um in the new patch into season two after being healthy for 12 seconds, we have an auto overpower. The timer is actually reduced by two seconds each time blood orbs heal me or overheal me. So because we're gonna be creating so many blood orbs and picking them up, this is gonna reset our guaranteed overpower. So we're gonna have more overpowers all the time. Okay, very big here. Now let's go into our book of the dead. We are sacking everything. Sacrificing our skeleton warriors for more crit chance. We are sacrificing our mages on bone for more overpower damage. And then we're sacrificing golems for 10% increased max life. Now, during the stages here, you can kind of go back and forth. I want to showcase this because our resistances are darn near maxed out. A lot of your resistances on Necromancer are going to come from your Paragon board and a few gear pieces, okay? These stats are pretty solid, but I want to show you what happens. Necromancer is an intelligence-based class. So intelligence naturally is going to give us more all resist. Okay, so the more intelligence that you have, the more all resist you're going to get. But we have a secret tech here for Necromancer. If you sacrifice defenders, we get 20% all resist. Now look at everything is super max. So if you don't care so much about crit chance, or if you have a decent crit chance, you could just max out all of your resistances. It's insane. Now, if we put this back on, I go from 27% to 35%. It's a huge boost, okay? 8% increased critical strike chance is pretty good, and we want it. My defenses are super good. They're not quite maxed, all of them. But with how much health that we have, which is 20,000, on top of getting a barrier as well as fortification, our resistances are pretty solid. I think we can survive. I'd rather have the extra 8%. But if you feel like you're a little squishy, then take that. Okay, next, let's get into our gear, guys, before we get into the Paragon board. You guys can see here that I have 14,000 attack power, 8,500 armor, and I have over 20,000 life. Okay, the more life that we have, the more that we fortify, and the more damage that we do when we overpower. In the patch notes, everything got changed from base life to max life, so that's why our life is so insanely high. So let's go over the gear. We're doing... A shielding storm each time a bone storm does damage as an enemy we gain a barrier this is why we are so tanky okay for 10 seconds next on our breastplate we are doing might you can also swap this out for disobedience if you would like more regular armor the damage reduction is good i was toying with disobedience before this i just didn't have another good disobedience role so might is good also guys we were using blood artisan curus this is also very very strong for the blood nova build um, or any other blood build for Necromancer. We get more damage, we get more healing, and then we also get more max life. 
The extra ranks in Bone Spirit aren't necessary, but when we pick up seven Blood Orbs, we send Bone um, Spirits to deal damage. It's okay. We had this until we got some really good damage reduction in total armor chest piece here. So you can, you can swap this out. This is also just as good. In our gloves, of course, we're doing Blood Bathe, which is our Blood Surge. This allows us to have a second Blood Surge. Kind of just pop out. And then we're doing Blood Moon Breaches in our pants. Okay, these are brand new. These are going to be one of the new uniques. Um, your minions have a 3% chance to curse enemies. Not important in this variant. Enemies affected by one of our curses take 70% multiplicative overpower damage from us. Where do we curse? With Decrepify. As long as the enemies are cursed, this trigger for 70% will always be active. Now, I do want to make sure that people, when they're playing this build, that you are able to do this without the pants. You can do this. You can just use normal pants. That is completely fine. You can come over here and use pants just like this, and you just stack up armor. And then what you do is you put your bone uh, storm um, barrier ability on here with shielding storm. And then in our helmet, we just add disobedience and we're good to go. Okay, in our boots, one of my favorite powers in the entire game is ghost walkers. While we're unstoppable and for four seconds, we get increased move speed. But more importantly, we can move freely through enemies so we're not jammed up. This is very good. You're going to see why this works really strong with our vampiric powers. In our uh, blade, because we're not doing a two hand, we got grasping veins. For our tendrils, we get increased critical strike chance and deal more damage. In our offhand, we're doing untimely death. Okay. Each percent of my max life I heal beyond 100%. Gives us 0.5% bonus overpower damage uh, on our next overpower attack up to 60%. This will always be hitting, and this is where we do insane amounts of damage. Very strong ability. In our amulet, we're doing Wrathness Chosen. This is a requirement for the build. You have to have it. Whenever we overpower, we get increased attack speed. Whenever we overpower, which is going to be all the time, our attack speed is going to shoot through the roof. In our rings, we have Umbral. This is probably the best resource management power that you can have. And we got lucky and we have only found one and it is a max roll of four. When we crowd control an enemy, we gain four per. So whenever we slow with Decrepify or stun and whenever we slow and stun with Corpse Centrals, we regain our entire essence bar. That's why we can constantly spam overpower with blood surge super powerful there's going to be instances where hemorrhage is going to come in but we mainly get to just constantly have our essence be full next is potent blood this is also a very strong one where whenever we are healthy and we pick up blood orbs we get 14 essence we do have a better role here i'm just trying to get a better ring but get picking this stuff up while we have um blood orbs and we're healthy just keeps our essence even full even more full i should say okay so that's the build, guys. Let's go over Vampiric Powers. These are the five that I've settled on. We had a lot of debate here for this build. Um, and you only get 20 points, as you guys can see here. 11 plus 7 is 8, plus the 2 is 20. You only get 20 points on all of your gear pieces in totality. So you cannot get all the super crazy ones, but you can get enough of them. So what we have opted for are these five, and I think they work very well. We have Blood Boil. When a core skill overpowers, we generate three blood drops, which is really cool, and they explode. But every 20 seconds, we get a guarantee overpower. Super strong. Next is our Metamorphose. Okay, this is the best curse in the game. Whenever we evade, we turn to a cloud of bass and become unstoppable for four seconds. And enemies along the path take damage, but they are inflicted with a curse. So they get a vampiric curse. This is where we become unstoppable, and that's why this pair with Ghost Walkers is insane. So I definitely recommend that you guys get boots that have maximum evade charges. I actually need to level up my boots. I haven't done that. Let's go ahead and do this. I need more Forgotten Souls. But having three maximum evade charges when we go to this is going to be nuts. Okay. Next, we have uh, Hemomancy. I think that's how I'm saying it right. This thing is completely broken. All right, this might be the next best one in the game. Okay, our attacks deal 80% of our max life as physical damage to nearby enemies. It can happen every four seconds, but we heal for 1% of our max life for each enemy damage this way. So we have 
20,000 life and we deal 80% of that with that skill in this build. It's absolutely nuts. It can be used on any attack. So be cautious of this when you do that. Like try to be like recognize that, hey, four seconds, let me do blood surge instead of hemorrhage because you'll deal even more damage. But then we heal for 1% of 20,000 life for each enemy we hit. Our life just skyrockets if you were injured in any way. So that vampiric power is absolutely broken. Definitely use it until they nerf it. Next, we have Ravenous. On a lucky hit, our attack speed gets increased uh, by 40% of our total move speed. Our total move speed currently is going to be not super fast, but it's fast enough where we get 143%. So 20% of this, we get more attack speed. Insane. And then last but not least is Prey on the Weak. So we deal 16% increased damage to vulnerable enemies. Enemies are vulnerable while affected by a curse. And where do we get our vampiric curse from? Ravenous. We can evade three times, applying a curse to each enemy along the path. They become vulnerable. We'll deal 16 times percent vulnerable damage. It's a huge stack. Insane. Definitely pair it with this ability. Super strong. So those are our vampiric powers, guys. Let's go into the Paragon board. Man, these build videos get really, really long. So let's open this up. I'm not going to go over this in great detail. I'm just going to hit you with the highlights, guys. But this entire Paragon, Paragon, Paragon board is based on max life and crowd control damage with overpower. We are going to have three legendary nodes, and we're going to overpower everything. So we're taking everything in overpower. So we're doing resilience for max life and all resist. Prime for damage and max life. We're doing Blood Drinker for Armor, Damage, Dex, and Willpower, and more importantly, Fortify. Then we're taking Preservation for Armor and Intelligence. We're taking Knowledge for Damage and Intelligence. Our next glyph we're taking is Territorial for Close Damage. Harden for more damage while Fortify and Intelligence. Thick Hide for Damage and Max Life. Ref uh, suffused Resilience, Damage Reduction, as well as All Resist. We're taking Bloodbath, required for the build. We deal even more overpower damage. Then we have Powerhouse, more overpower damage, as well as damage while healthy. Our next board we're taking is Blood Begets Blood. Blood Orbs grant 5% increased damage, up to 50%. Super huge while we're picking these up. This should always be live, even at a minimum of 5%. We have uh, Aggression, more overpower damage and regular damage. Then we're taking Blood Drinker, more Blood Orb healing as well as intelligence. Our next one is um, corporeal, more blood orb healing, but more importantly, the more overpower damage as well as dex and uh, willpower. Then we have blood empowered, 20% uh, damage after picking up a blood orb. Then we have vampiric, more blood orb healing, but more importantly, the max life, take all those nodes. Up here, this is gonna be bone graft, but we're not taking that. We just needed to get to a glyph slot, which is gonna be control for more damage against crowd controlled or slowed. Everything should always be crowd control, so this will always be live. Then we're taking a Rudite for more uh, all resist and crowd control damage. And then over here, we're taking Tenacity. We're not getting the max here, but more 4% max life is insane with the extra two here. Definitely take all that. Then we're coming down to our last board, which is going to be Send of Death. We're going to take this. With at least two corpses nearby, you gain 15% damage reduction. When none are nearby, we get increased damage. This is going to be more used for damage reduction then offensively it just helps us stay alive we're always going to be creating corpses so that's good we're taking shadow resilience for more shadow all res and max life more importantly the max life then our last glyph and the most important one that you guys saw from the leveling build is dominate plus 325 percent overpower damage they take insane amount even more from us it's nuts then we're taking preservation for more armor and intelligence and last we're taking death mark for damage to injured enemies and intelligence. So that is the Paragon board, guys. That will be down in the description below so everybody can have it. This build is going to be brought to you by Mobilytics. We are sponsored by Mobilytics, the number one gaming site for your builds in Diablo 4, as well as all the other gears. So big shout out to um, Mobilytics for the sponsorship and love here. So make sure you go check out the build down in that description below. Click that link to go check everything out. So guys, real quick, I want to show just a little bit more of the build and just kind of show you this and talk about a few things that are an issue with the build. The build is insanely over, um, overpowered. It's super strong. You can do all content with this. You can do everything with it. Okay, but there are a few issues. One issue 
is that we have to move constantly to pick up blood orbs, okay? We have to move constantly to pick them up. So even though with those three, we have to move to pick those all up. Okay, so that's one big issue. Okay, the next issue that you have is resourcing, like resource management. It is always a big problem. Go ahead and pull everybody in. Everybody dies. Super easy. Grab the key and we're out. So those are the only problems that I see with the build. Is that you have to manually pick up all the orbs, which in comparison to a build like Bloodlance is super strong. Because Bloodlance can just automatically use them. So besides that, there's only one other thing that I find a problem with this build. And as you can see, we're like demolishing large groups. I'm going to get to the boss. I'm going to show you single target damage is incredibly hard with this build. It can work, but I want to show you guys that it it is a little tough. Okay. It is a little tough to do single target damage. Um, and it just, it just kind of sucks. We really, we really play off of uh, having big groups here. As you guys can see, we just destroy everything and you can just constantly grab it all. Like, you just constantly corpse central them. You constantly curse. And you just gotta try to stay really mobile with this build and just move as much as you can. That way you're picking up all the orbs. But besides that, oops. The build slaps, okay? It kills absolutely everything. I wanna fight the boss just to show you guys what happens with the boss as you can see there there goes the vampiric power everything just dies which is just awesome and with how fast we attack you guys see that i was out of um essence there we can just look at that a couple hemorrhages and our resources back if we're not actually doing enough to get it back but you should always have your resource full so let's cut to and go fight the boss here here we go all right, so we start off with Corpse Explosion, Blood Mist, Curse. Now, the build doesn't do too bad against single target, at least on the initial. But once you, like, run out of resource because you're not able to hit as many targets, you do suffer there, so you're going to have to hemorrhage. But otherwise, the build absolutely slaps, guys. Let me know. Like the video. Let me know down in the comments what you guys think. Don't forget to subscribe, and as always, stay gaming. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.